What is going on everybody and welcome to a brand new video guys. My name is Elite and today we're talking about FIFA 19 investing right at the beginning of the game. If we're already like three or four weeks into the game, this video really isn't going to help you out as much as it will if you see this before the first week of FIFA because that is what this is going to be focusing on. Now you can definitely still learn something even if you're late to the party to this video, but nonetheless, it is going to be focused on that first week of FIFA. So if you guys saw my last video, I talked about ways that you can get from zero up to like 300,000 coins on just the web app right when the game is released through catalog, through squad building challenges, daily objectives, sniping, all of that stuff. So if you haven't seen that video, it'll help you out a lot because that's kind of step one and then this video will be step two essentially. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using those coins that we got from first episode. We're going to be using those coins that we got off of the web app and we're going to be investing those into certain cards. So this video is going to show you why certain cards work better than others right at the beginning of the game and which ones you should be looking out for. So the first thing we're going to be talking about in this uh, episode is going to be team of the week number one. So for FIFA 18, this is what team of the week one looked like. You had a lot of good cards in there and we're not even going to be taking a look at the real big ones like Aguero and Mertens and here's why. These cards are the ones that all of those big content creators are going to be looking at on the first day. One, there's not going to be a ton of supply for those cards and two, they're not going to be cheap whatsoever. So even if you wanted to invest in them, there's a good chance that you're not going to be able to afford them quite yet because what we saw from Mertens was he never dropped below 400,000 coins on the first week of the game simply because he was that high-end tier card that all the big content creators who already spent $500 to $1,000 on FIFA points could afford and those were the cards that they were going for but there's a lot of them that sneak through the cracks let's go ahead and take a look at players such as Fabianski let's take a look at players such as Bakambu and players like even Valencia even though that's like a higher tier card this will still work so let's go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about for this I just kind of gave you a sneak peek of towards the end of the video so stick around for that but um, we're gonna start off with Bakambu so if Bakambu's card was an 84 rated card he was in La Liga for Villarreal I believe and it was his first inform and I believe his only inform and so that's the card at subject right now 84 rated 90 pace 79 physical 83 shooting 84 dribbling and 78 passing now now that we're done with FIFA 18, that card doesn't look ridiculously great. I mean, he only has three-star skill moves. He does have good pace, and his other stats are very nice, but nothing compared to, like, the team of the season cards we've seen. So it's not really relevant anymore, and as you guys can see, there's only two on the market, and they're both going for, like, 20,000 coins. But at the first week of the game, this card is very, very valuable. It's one of the better cards in the game, and something you got to keep in mind these cards are only in packs for the first week. So after that, they're going to be in packs no longer, but the demand might stay the same. People might want to continue to buy these Bakambu cards even after the first week. And when the supply gets cut off, cut off the price will just rise. So let's go ahead and show you guys the graphs of this. So right here is the Bakambu graph. Here's what we're looking for. That's the card on the second day of the game. As you guys can see, it has a little bit of a drop. So the cheapest time for Bakambu was the second day of FIFA 18, which was uh, September 28th, the first day being September 27th, and he was like 61,000 coins. So he started off at like 58k, and that, if you guys are confused on how Footbin works, it averages the uh, lowest price of the day. So you could have gotten this card for probably around 35 to 40,000 coins if you bought him in the right time of the day. So that's kind of what I actually did at the beginning of FIFA 18. This was my card as an investment. I'm going to be choosing a card similar to this for FIFA 19. So if you guys take a look at some of the other prices of Bakambu throughout the next couple months, this is December. He's up to 127,000 coins. That's almost three times as much as what he was on the first couple days of the game. And then here is what we're going to be looking at because we're not holding our cards to December. We're going to be holding them for like a week, maybe two weeks, as you guys can see here. He's up to 123,000 coins, which is well over double of our coins in profit. So that 
is a great way to spend your coins on something like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the other cards, guys. Um, we're going to look at, let's go with Valencia. Let's go with the high tier card, Valencia. So this is Valencia on the first day of the game. 164,000 coins. Now, again, that's only averaging the lowest price of the day. So there's tons of cards that go up for way cheaper on snipes and stuff like that. I even think Golden Bear got one for about 20,000 coins on the first day. And if you are super, super early to the party, you can get them for that cheap because nobody has coins. And that's why it's so important to grind out the web app right at the beginning. So Valencia right there, 164,000. You can see he just only rises. He just only rises in price. And then boom, there he is. 546,000 coins by December, and if you looked at him in October, mid-October, he's already up to 300,000 coins, but this is just one of those cards that just continued to rise for a couple of reasons, one of them being the fact that there were no other Valencia cards released into the game, and uh, he was just one of the most valuable cards in terms of a Premier League defense. Everybody was using him in terms of weekend league. All those factors are considered. So next up, we've got Fabianski. This will be the last one for the team of the week one. As you can see, he's averaging 15,000 coins on the first day. Pretty easy to get him for discard price. Pretty easy to get him for about 11 to 12,000 coins on the first day of the game. And then boom, just another week and a half later, he's up to uh, 32,900 coins. And he gets up to higher points at certain times, especially because of SBC's Player of the Month for Fabianski, obviously a Premier League goalkeeper and an 83-rated inform. Stuff like that can cause those cards to rise. So you don't only have to be investing for the fact that the card is good and going to be used and going to go up in price naturally, but you can double dip and see, hey, this card's in the Premier League. He could be used in the SBC as well, which could double double your profit and double your chances of profit. So 32,000 coins easily doubles the coins. And again, that's only the average of the day. So if you find it at the right time of the day or list it overnight, those cards will sell for more than 33,000 coins. And especially if you apply Tech Avion, which is a video I did back at the beginning of FIFA 18, but it's essentially a very simple trading method to where the point uh, where, when you're selling a card, you add a chemistry style, you add full contract, full fitness, and it makes the card more appealing and valuable to the consumer, the customer, and they are going to buy it for more, even if it's not the cheapest card on the market. So that is a, a great trading method to get your cards to sell for more. And when you're trying to sell your cards, guys, especially if you're beginners and uh, you've got plenty of time, like you're gonna about to go to sleep, list your cards for 12 hours overnight and list them up for more than what they actually go for. There's a couple things that could happen. One, there could be a lazy buyer that comes along and he's not really looking for the cheapest price. He just wants the card and he buys it. And that happens a lot. Now, we're definitely not gonna be doing that. And hopefully you don't do that, but it happens. And that is, you know, another way to make a little bit more coinage. The other thing is, is that during the night, sometimes the cards get a little bit more rare because there's less people on the market. When I'm talking about nighttime, I'm talking UK, Eastern USA nighttime, like maybe about 6 a.m. UK, which would be 1 p.m. here in Eastern United States. That's probably when the least amount of cards are on the market. It's before like Germany and France and UK wake up, and it's normally after most of the people in the USA and Canada and Mexico and, and the Americas in general have gone to sleep, and the only people awake on the market are the Asian servers and the uh, Oceania servers, which don't nearly compare to the amount of people that are on the market from the uh, Americas and Europe. So that's another thing to consider. Guys, so that is probably the biggest trading method that I'm going to leave you guys with in this video. It's going to be the focus, but there's a couple of conspiracy theories that I want to get out to you guys. Actually, we're going to do one for this video, but keep an eye out for other videos similar to this. We're going to do one for this video, guys, and it's going to be about Team of the Season MLS. I mentioned in my last video, you should have been expecting this. Team of the Season MLS. We didn't see it in FIFA 18 for the first time. For the first time since I've been playing FIFA, uh, I started playing FIFA in FIFA 14. This is the first time there hasn't been a team of the season MLS in the game in FIFA 18. So I, I have a theory, all right? So hear me out on this. I think that team of the season MLS is actually going to be released at the beginning of of FIFA 19. Why is it going to be released at the beginning of FIFA 19? Well, it's because the team or, or the MLS season actually ends in October. So what they do is they go from March to the uh, like end of October, beginning of November, because what happens is in these northern states like uh, Minnesota, it gets ridiculously cold in the winter. So they kind of like to go with the summer 
uh, and playing out this season, which is completely different from the rest of the world. I guess that's how America runs most of the things, to be honest. But that's just how it works. You know, I don't choose how it works. That's how it works. But with that being said, guys, the team of the season could actually come out at the end of the season rather than during the MLS All-Stars, which happens in July. So the MLS All-Stars is where they take the best players and they go ahead and play like a world-class club like Real Madrid. And normally it's a really good game because you're taking the best players from MLS and you're taking, you know, one club from Europe and they are actually pretty even in terms of uh, uh, the games normally. So that's what they normally do. But this year they didn't do that. And that's why I think that it could come out. Now, the only thing that kind of gets me here is because Giovinco, team of the season, was released with most consistent. Now, that kind of throws me off a little bit. But then again, you know, why is FIFA 18 going to stop what they do in FIFA 19, especially if it's only one card like Giovinco? So I put together a couple of graphics I made on Photoshop for you guys. And here is number one. These are some cards that could potentially be team of the season in MLS. Now, I didn't do all of the cards, but I did go through a few of them. I think I did 10 so i'm just going to show you guys some ideas and the reason that this wraps back to trading is because when you pick up some of these cards like their base cards and they go out of packs they're going to go up in price their base cards are going to go up in price now this concept probably works better with like team of the week two and team of the week three so what i'm saying is let's say Marco Royce, for example. Actually, let's go with a lower rated card. Um, let's go with, it's hard to think of something right off the top of your head, Mikael Antonio for West Ham. I believe he's a striker for West Ham, something like that. Mikael Antonio, you get the point. Mikael Antonio gets like a hat trick for West Ham. Yeah, believe it or not. He gets a hat trick for West Ham. And so you know for a fact he's about to be in that next team of the week. He's going to be in team of the week too, right? So if he's going to be in team of the week too, you want to buy that base card because when he's in team of the week too, he's going to be out of packs for seven days. And when it's that early in the game, that's very significant because people are still buying the card. The supply is cut off and he goes up in price a ton. And we saw that last year. So that's something to keep in mind. Back to the MLS cards. Martinez. Joseph Martinez from Atlanta United, one of the top goal scorers in MLS. Romero Gamara, one of the top assist players in MLS. Zach Steffen. Zach Steffen, also known for being a very good player for the uh, MLS, or not the MLS, but the USA youth players, especially against France earlier this year, but also has one of the best ratios in terms of uh, games played and, uh, and saves and um, games, uh, games against ratio. I can't remember what it's called. It's like goals against average. That's what it is. Goals against average. Zach Steffen has one of the best in MLS. So I threw him in there because I think he might be a shout for goalkeeper there as well. But we also have Stefan Frey, who has one of the best goals against averages and also one of the most saves. That's something different than Zach Steffen. Zach Steffen didn't have a crazy amount of saves in MLS, but the goals against average kind of shows that when he's needed, he's there. And then we've got Al Marone, who's got the best rating from MLS this year. So he's probably going to be one of the higher rated MLS players so he'll probably be like 82 or 83 rated alongside Giovinco and since those cards are a little bit higher rated I think those are probably going to be the focus of the investment so remember that Almiron and Giovinco I'm probably thinking are the better investments and the ones I'm going to be focusing on next up we've got Carlos Vela Bradley Wright Phillips and then Keith Taro here here's a couple more again I'd focus on the higher rated cards like Vela if he's 82 or 83 rated go for him for sure and then we've got uh, obviously Zlatan Ibrahimovic I'm not sure what his ratings going to be in FIFA 19. I actually have no idea. He was 88 base card in FIFA 8, uh, 18, but I can't, I don't know if they're, they're definitely not going to give him an upgrade. I don't know if they're going to downgrade him, but I gave his team of the season a 91. And the reason I kind of made these team of the season, it's not a ridiculous boost like they did in FIFA 18. It's because it's the beginning of the game. They're not going to give him a huge boost right at the beginning of the game so that's gonna be it for today's video guys hopefully this video helps you out at the beginning of fifa 19 guys and actually before we end i just want to go ahead and mention that gold cards just regular gold cards players like 
Anthony Martial, Gabriel Jesus, Leon Goretzka, players like that also work for investing in right at the beginning of the game. I did that with Renato Sanchez at the beginning of FIFA 17 and 18. That's just one of the cards that works really well. I don't know if he's going to work too well in the next FIFAs because he's probably not going to get a big upgrade. He's probably going to be pretty low rated. So players like Goretzka are going to be great investments right at the beginning of the game because they might be going for like 6,000 coins and then boom, they're 25k in two weeks, just like we saw with the team of the week cards. So yes, that's going to be it for today's video. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Check out the last video I uploaded if you haven't seen that yet to help you get from zero to like 300,000 coins in the first couple days of FIFA pretty easily. I'm not even going to lie. So that's it, guys. Make sure to subscribe, drop a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.